the instructions that I give if somebody wants to learn to, we'll use running, but it's true for walking too. Take off your shoes, find a nice smooth, hard surface, um, good, some sidewalk, bike path, et cetera. Uh, the, uh, the white line on the side of a road, if it's a freshly painted white line, that makes barefoot runners just teary eyed, but smooth, hard surface, because that's going to give you the most feedback. And um, you don't want to run on grass, for example, because that's just like taking the cushioning from your shoe and putting it all over the planet. Plus, there's things you can't see in grass that you don't want to step on or in, divots or worse. Now that I have a dog, many things that are worse. Um, and so anyway, shoes off, smooth, hard surface, go for a really short run, like 20 seconds, tops, and then wait and see how you feel the next day. If you're a little sore, like when you haven't been to the gym for a while and you just do a little too much, wait till you're recovered and then do that 20 seconds again. When you can do that and you feel like you just want to keep going and you feel fine the next day, add 10 more seconds the next time. And then 10 and then 10. Just build it up slowly and you'll find that it builds up pretty quickly. Now, if you are a five-day-a-week runner, you can do this at the beginning of your run and then just switch back to your shoes, do whatever the hell you want. And eventually, you'll find that you might be able to do one of those five days totally barefoot or in shoes like ours. Uh, and then eventually you just kind of build it up. So you're titrating. There's not a simple answer because we are all unique little snowflakes in certain ways. Some people can't feel the ground very well because they've been in shoes that made their brain not pay attention to their feet. Some people can feel things and they can tell if it hurts or not. Oh, that's the instruction. Sorry. The big instruction, short run, uh, see how you feel. If you're not having fun, do something different till you are. If it hurts, do something different till you're having fun. And I'll say more about that in a sec. Some people, again, can't tell if it hurts. They literally have, their brain has changed its shape so much that it's not receiving the input from the feet. The idea there is walk around barefoot on mildly unpleasant surfaces like pea gravel or just a good sidewalk even. Some people can tell if it hurts, but they don't have good proprioceptive skills. They don't know where their body is, what their body's doing. You tell them to put your arm parallel to the ground, they, you know, reach like they're trying to answer a question in school. Um, I'm exaggerating, of course, but they need like a video feedback so they can see that what they think they're doing is different from what they are doing. Yeah. I had someone say, hey, the sole of your shoe, the heel of the shoe, uh, that material is not really good. You need to replace it. I go, you're overstriding and heel striking. They go, I, I don't do that. I teach running. I know that I don't do that. Really, send me a video. So the guy sends me a video. It took me 20 minutes for him to see that he was actually overstriding, putting his foot too far in front of his body and heel striking. And then the next thing he said was, yeah, but I don't do that. I said, dude, it's a video of you by you sent by you. I mean, I don't know who you think it is. And I've, I've seen that a few times. So some people just need a little video feedback or someone who can watch them and give them some feedback. And I'll say more about proper form in just a moment. Third group of people, they can tell if it hurts. They have decent proprioceptive skills. They need some cues just to speed up the learning process. Things like try to land with your feet behind you. It's not possible. But mm. if you try, you know, you can do that. Or exaggerate what you're doing wrong. Reach your feet way out in front of you so you can feel what that's like. But what you ultimately want to do is land with your feet mostly as close to your center of mass, underneath your body as much as possible. You're going to land on your midfoot or your forefoot. You're going to engage, it'll engage your arch. You're going to let your heel come down to the ground naturally as it needs to. And you want to lift your foot off the ground instead of pushing your foot off the ground. So think about lifting from your, your hip bending instead of pushing from your toes flexing. Um, another thing you want to do in that cue is pick up your cadence just a little bit. Don't run faster, but have a few more steps per minute. Because if you are overstriding and heel striking, for example, and you pick up your cadence from, let's say it's 150 steps per minute to 155 or 160, it's going to be harder to overstride and heel strike because you don't have as much time with your feet on the ground. So picking up your cadence is just a good panacea. It's a good thing that'll you know take care of a bunch of things. Um, you want to have just a little bit of forward lean in your body from kind of like from your ankles. There's no magic to that one. It's just that you don't want to be totally upright, really. Um, and you want to have your arms, you know, keep your thumbs up by your armpits because the faster your arms can move, the faster your legs can move. And if you have a, if your arms are way too far down, it's a longer lever. If you got them up by your armpits, that's helpful too. So, um, but I'll, I'll actually, I'm going to give you my favorite recommendation because I just realized that by the time people are hearing this, there's a new book that will have come out called Born to Run 2. And if people know the book Born to Run, which catalyzed this whole natural movement, movement, <laughs> um, Born to Run 2 is the ultimate training guide. Each chapter is an exercise you can do that helps you get proper, better form to make you a happier, healthier runner. And there's an app that goes with it with videos that show you how to do all those things. And happily, 
Uh, the guy who wrote Born to Run, Chris McDougall, and his training partner and running coach, and now co-author Eric, co-author, Eric Orton, uh, they called me and said, you know, there's a footwear section of Born to Run 2. Do you want to send us some Zero shoes? We can see if we like them enough to put them in there. And we're now partners with them. This is the first time they've ever endorsed a shoe in 13 years. And, and we're even going to be making Born to Run shoes along with them. So, um, so we're proud to say their whole goal is to get people to learn to be happy, healthy runners in zero shoes.